Okay, so officially, hi, I'm Yana. Hey, Yana, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, I'm always good. It's hard to have a bad day on the Gold Coast, if I'm honest, so... Amazing. You guys seem to have escaped the worst of this bloody virus, too. Yeah, well, I mean, I only just moved to the Gold Coast, so this is my 25th day of living in the Gold Coast. Are you um, kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've lived, I grew up in Adelaide. I lived in Melbourne for two years, and then, uh, yeah, now I'm a Goldie boy. Wow. So what took you to the Gold Coast? Like, do you know what? I just came here a couple of times. Like, um, you know, me and my best friend, Eli, we just came here sort of as like a work sort of retreat. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, once you come up here, you're like, wow, it's warm pretty much all the time like and it's such a relaxed relaxed place and there's great restaurants and um yeah it just has a vibe and I was just like all right cool like this is where I want to live like why would you live anywhere else (laughs) (laughs) and you've got meter maids so you know I've never seen a meter maid I I think they're like mermaids (laughs) or like the Loch Ness monster (laughs) just an urban myth (laughs) yeah yeah that's what I think Oh, that's a shame. I'm sorry you moved all the way there just to discover that. <laughs> no, waste of time. So you mentioned that you grew up in Adelaide and, um, you know, I've heard you talk really frankly in other podcasts and interviews and stuff about some of the things that went on for you as a child. And in, in my life as a therapist, you know, I'm always really interested in people's backstory and like what they've overcome to get to where they are today. Because, you know, on the surface, if you just look at Teddy Briggs' Instagram, you know, you've got a really successful, outgoing, happy, confident guy. Um, mm. But we all know that Instagram is about 10% of our Audio. existence. And um, so I guess for me, I'd love to start a little bit back in the beginning and, and talk about Teddy in Adelaide and what life was like for you as a young boy. Yeah. Hang on. Sorry. I think I just, I got a phone call. I think it ruined the recording. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, I guess like you're absolutely right with what you're saying. Like we only see certain amounts uh yeah instagram is only a a small portion of people's lives and honestly like what i portray on instagram now is quite accurate but people see where i am now like mentally and uh financially and uh you know with all the cool things that i haven't and i'm honestly like the happiest and most grateful i've ever been in my life so that that part is true but people don't understand that it wasn't always like that it took so much work and like you know the amount of like shit that I had to like crawl through to be able to develop the strength um which has now helped me you know in so many other facets like people just assume that you were handed everything on a silver plate and there you go um and it's completely not the case like you know obviously like I had a lot of challenges in my upbringing I've had a lot of challenges as an adult like even recently you know what I mean um Mm -hmm. and I guess that's just part of life we all have adversity in our lives and um, you know, our pathway is dictated by, you know, how we overcome that adversity and how we come out the other side better and stronger. So I'm a big yeah. advocate for, for that. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's basically what this podcast is all about. It's showing people that we all struggle with these things. Every single one of us goes through difficult times, has family stuff, has mental health stuff, has, you know, situational factors that play into their lives but it's how we move through it that makes the difference. And I guess that's how we can help each other is by sharing our stories and learning from each other's mistakes and what's worked and what hasn't worked. So, I mean, if you look back at young Teddy in Adelaide, do you think he ever would have pictured Teddy of 2021? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I know, uh, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, I never thought that I would, you know, uh, when I was in such a dark time, like, you know, I never thought that, um, you know, I would get to a better place or anything. And yeah, to be honest, I hadn't liked my struggles, but no matter how, I don't know what it was. I just always knew, like I knew I was going to be, have money and I knew I was going to like be something. And obviously I'm still, for me, I feel like I'm at the start of my journey. Definitely not the end. Like I'm only just getting started, but I always knew and I still know like that I'm where I'm going to end up. I didn't, I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there. Uh, um, But I just have always known, like even when I've had really difficult times and struggled, like, 
you know, even when I was like in school and I was like really, really struggling and hated it and like wasn't happy and stuff. Like I always knew I was like, oh, one day, like <laughs> one day I'm going to, you know, it's all going to be great. And yeah. Well, that, that's ima- that like says a lot about you and your makeup, that you're able to be in school and having a really tough time and still to be able to take yourself out of the moment and see the, the light and the hope. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously I'm all about manifesting and we'll get into that because I know yeah. you are too. But um, so much of that is about mindset. But to have that from such a young age, to be able to look past, you know, friendship issues or uh, bullying or, you know, whatever it is that's happening to so many kids and to see that things will get better and just have that way of knowing, you know, it's, it's amazing. Where did you get that confidence? I, I honestly don't know. Like, and I was such a timid like kid and stuff like that. Um, and you know, I, I feel like we all have it in us. I feel like everybody has their capacity. I feel like we just don't harness it. And it's easy to fall into like victim mentality or, you know, you cop a few knocks, you have, you know, adversity is real. Bad shit is real. Like, you know what I mean? It's not sunshine and rainbows all the time. Like bad shit sometimes happens to people. And it's okay, like, and it happens to everybody and it's fine. Um, And in those times, it's kind of hard to then picture like, oh, well, this is going to get better. Um, So I think it's uh, that that's what can be a real struggle for, for me when I was younger and most people. And I think it's, you know, I feel like not everyone receives enough advice or education to to learn how to overcome things and learn like okay this is just a problem right now but like you can overcome this and then life's going to be amazing like and then you'll have more problems again (laughs) and then you (laughs) overcome then like you know problems are not going anywhere um Mm -hmm. our our ability to resolve problems and move forward is is the key you know yeah i mean in a nutshell that's resilience isn't it yeah 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 being knocked down and being able to move through it and, and fall down and pick yourself up again. Um, do you, would you say that your mum had anything to do with that, instilling that kind of mindset in you as, as a youngster? You know, I never recognised this about my mum when I was younger, but, like, now that I'm older and a bit smarter, <laughs> um, <laughs> my mum has had, like, a huge impact on me in, in so many ways, like, you know, even because you would look at my mom now, she's a lady of leisure, right? She's living the life. But, you know, really in especially in my early life, when I was born, like she was, uh, you know, had a very uh, abusive relationship, like with my biological um, father and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, she basically had to like, she's a strong woman, she had to get us out of that situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now, now that I'm older, and I understand, you know, my mom would be because if you're in a if you're in a relationship like that, um, and people say, "Oh, we'll just leave." It's not that easy. Like you know what I mean? It's like, the, especially as a woman, like you know, there's a certain level of like control. You can't just pick up and just you know leave. So you know, the fact my mom she was working a job and on her lunch break she would go and buy things for what we needed for our new house. So she would go and buy a kettle. She would go and buy like plates until she had built and she would store it at work. Wow. so that um, her partner wouldn't know, right? And uh, then when she got to a stage where she had a little bit of money, uh, like enough to get us a, a small apartment and, and uh, you know, like things so that we could actually go there. Um, and then, uh, and then she, uh, she took us, right? Or she took wow. me and her. Um, and I think when you're, when you're like, you know, real little, like you don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> yeah. but now that you're older, you're just like, holy shit, like that's a strong woman. And then, you know, even her working full time, putting me in daycare and like, basically, like, by the time she would pay for my daycare, most of her wage would be gone. Mm. Uh, so, you know, she really, I, I didn't understand till I was older, but she was so strong, like so ridiculously strong um, that, you know, I feel like that's where I got a lot of my resilience from. Mm. Um, and then also onto the manifesting and stuff like that. My mom's into like Reiki and all these things. And, um, you know, so she, she has a huge impact on my life, no doubt. Wow. She sounds amazing because, you know, as you said, one of the toughest things for a lot of people in those kinds of, uh, difficult relationships or abusive situations is, 
finding the strength to leave. And especially if you've got little kids, I mean, there's, there's so much that plays into that. So for her to have been quietly planning her escape, you know, behind the scenes and doing all of that on her own is amazing. Incredible. Right. Like, and I feel like that's where, like when I face adversity, like I never quitting never comes into my head. Like, it's not like a, Oh, I want to quit. This is like too hard. Like, Quitting never computes in my brain as a possibility. And I think that's why, because yeah, like when you learn that sort of like resilience, you know, I like to think of my life as like a movie, right? Like Forrest Gump, you know how Forrest Gump is like an actual real movie. And uh, you know, when I'm going through something shit, I'm like, oh, this is the part in the movie where like I'm the main character and I'm like, oh, and he's going through the hard times, but that builds up the movie for when he succeeds and there's something. <laughs> I love it. That's such a great analogy. And, you know, again, that's an amazing mindset to have because for a lot of people, there's, they don't see the bigger picture like that. Yeah. And, you know, that's where a lot of people can get really unwell. And, you know, there's yeah. a lot of things that can go wrong when you can't see a way out. So the yeah. fact that you're able to see yourself as just going through the tricky part of the movie, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> knowing that the triumph is at the end, I mean, that just means every knock is just another scene you're going to get through. Yeah. And like, imagine if there was just a movie where the character just wins the whole time and doesn't have any adversity. It'd be the worst movie ever. Totally. <laughs> so boring, yeah. Totally. So, you know, I understand from doing a little bit of research that, you know, you did have a tough time at school, but you did push through and then you were sort of trying to find your way and, um, you know, become somebody in the world when Love Island came your way. But from what I do understand, that wasn't kind of your first little foray into entertainment. You'd actually done some stand-up as a young kid. Is that right? How do you know that? Oh, I do my research, Teddy. <laughs> How do you know that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so funny. Um, so, yeah, yeah, true true story. I actually don't know how you knew that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like um, <laughs> when I was like uh, 14, 15, um, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. And I, um, I did, uh, yeah, I used to perform in Adelaide. I've actually performed with some like pretty big names like Tom Gleason and, um, oh. you know, a few other guys like that. So, um, yeah, no, I did it. I, I actually, I was uh, talking to my uh, my assistant the other day and I was like, um, cause she was like, Teddy, you're so funny. And, um, I was like, ah, thanks. Uh, but I was like, one, that's why one day, I pay I, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I pay you to tell me that. But yeah, I'm like one, one day I will do a, a bit of stand up again. I will. Amazing. So, I mean, do you, you will, or you won't. I will just for fun. Like for fun. I don't care about making any money from it. Like, yeah, I just yeah. Do, do it again for fun. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that must be a rush, you know, getting up on stage and it's just you. It's not like a big production behind you. It's just you and your jokes. And, you know, did you, do you remember what that feeling was like, being on stage with big names like that? I think, like, what – it's for such a timid kid who was, like, struggling and stuff like that. How did I – I, it blows my mind like how did I like actually have the courage to go up I don't know whether my routines were that good or not but like the fact that I even did it mm -hmm. got on stage in front of adults um you know performing in a club that I legally wasn't old enough to go into yeah. um but like you know you had to leave after your set because <laughs> you weren't allowed to be in there <laughs> but uh but yeah I don't know I always I, I feel like that's uh just has to be nature you know what I mean mm. like you know uh, like some things happen from our environment, other things happen just from nature. Like we want to sort of like perform or even to this day, like if you, whether I'm filming like Love Island or whether I'm filming, you know, like a TV ad or like anything or just an interview, like I love all of it. Like it's so mm -hmm. fun to me. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, you're not holding back. You're just going to try everything, anything that you're interested in, you're going to give it a go throw some spaghetti at the wall and just see what sticks. I love that. That's, yeah. uh, that's a brilliant way to live your life. And, yeah. and I think, you know, often when I'm talking to people as well about this, I feel like, you know, we only live once. Like yeah. you have to try it. If there's something that you want to do, why would you not just do it? Yeah. A any human that ever achieved anything 
mm. only got there because they tried it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. So then, you know, you you were kind of having a taste of performing and that kind of thing, and you got yourself a star now profile. And then, where did that lead you, Teddy? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. Like I, I was, uh, I'd gone through a, like a long like rebuild. Um, you know, for myself, I had some like bad health. I had some, uh, you know, like, I feel like I wasn't happy in myself. I was struggling a little financially. I was struggling. I went through a big rebuild. Um, and I was like, okay, let's go the safe option. Let's go down the nine to five path. Like, you know, I, I did some study, got a job in finance. And then pretty much I was just, once I then got there, I was like, okay, I'm safe. I'm secure. I'm doing what a grown up does. Yeah. And then after a little while, I was like, uh, I'm not really like, I wasn't really built for this. Like, you know what I mean? So um, I just wasn't. So yeah, I got myself a star now profile and I said, I just basically wrote down some things that I like doing. I was just like, okay, I like entertainment. I like traveling. I like, you know, this kind of stuff. So I'm just going to see what I can do. Um, and I made a star now profile and then, yeah, I got a message <laughs> within a few <laughs> weeks. So I got a message. Oh, Hey, you know, season one of love Island. Uh, Australia is coming out, you know, would you like to apply? And uh, I didn't realize that there was, they probably did that to thousands of people. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm being offered a show. Like I'm yeah. in. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then I realized like about 10 rounds later that I was just like, Oh, okay. I wasn't in at all. Like, I <laughs> <laughs> so what was that experience like for you going through all of those, I guess, rounds of auditions and that kind of thing? So much fun. Like, um, one basically like after they asked me to apply they said can you make a three minute video so um i had my little sister holly who's just like like she's so creative she's so yeah she's so smart and creative and and she basically orchestrated this full audition video it took us like hours to film wow. and uh and we sent it off and they messaged me back they're like that's the best audition video we've ever seen they're just like you killed it like and uh, so from that point, I think they were very interested. And then, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like obviously all through the face-to-face -face interviews and like the calls and stuff like that, you know, it was really nerve wracking, mm -hmm. but it was so much fun. Like I actually loved it. And I feel like that's really where I excel. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's the performer in you, isn't it? Like you're, yeah. you're entertaining on some level, even yeah. if you're talking about your life and your experiences and stuff. So at Throughout that process, I mean, you know, Love Island has obviously been a successful show in the UK for a long time. So I imagine you had an idea of what you were going yeah. in for. Like, were you conscious at the time that this was, you know, a dating show? Or were you just like excited by the opportunity to try something new? I think I was, I was just excited to be honest. Like once they, once uh, like Love Island contacted me, I was like, oh, well, I better watch some. So <laughs> I had heard of it and um, I used to get tagged because I re I look similar to a guy who was on the UK version. Mm -hmm. And so I used to get tagged in pictures and people were like, oh, Teddy, this looks like you. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> like I sort of knew about it, but then I watched the show and I was like, wow, this is so cool. This is so fun. They go to Spain, like, you know, mm -hmm. so I think I was just excited. I think anyone you know, who is interested in that kind of stuff, you, you have to be excited. It's a cool, it's such a cool thing. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at, at that point it was a huge show. It did have a big following, but you mentioned the, that you looked like somebody and I think well, that was Mike, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I look like, uh, Mike, the uh, Lassidus, um, mm. I, hope I pronounced that right. Or Mike Thala. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, uh, I looked like him and I watched him on the show and I really liked him. Like he was kind of like, uh, different personalities, like his Mr. Smooth and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> more quiet, but more like smooth, but, um, yeah, I really liked him on the show. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously that's all tied up with a bit of sadness too. Yeah. And, you know, for those people that don't know what happened, Mike took his life um, a few years ago now, I think. Yeah, a couple of years ago, yeah. Yeah, and so it was, was that before or after you'd started to watch his season? Uh, so 
um, unfortunate. Like what happened with Mike was after we, uh, my season was already out. Okay. So I'd already watched his season. I've already uh, been on the show. And then when it happened, mm. yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, a bit close. heartbreaking. Like, I mean, mm. obviously it's heartbreaking when anybody takes their own life or, you know, it's, it's awful. But I think like, because we look like each other and because I watched him and I was a fan and I, you know, followed his Instagram and stuff like that. Um, I like, I don't know. I, it hit me. It really did hit mm. me. Um, yeah. So that was, that was really, that was really sad. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, anytime somebody takes their own life, it is, it's absolutely devastating. And it's, it's something that sort of doesn't get talked about a lot. We talk, mm-hmm. Sometimes we talk broadly about suicide and we talk about yeah. statistics and that kind of thing. We talk yeah. about, you know, checking in with people and making sure they're okay. But so often, you know, these things come seemingly out of the blue and young men, um, as we know, uh, you know, in the biggest risk factor for suicide. Yeah. So, I mean, when that did hit you and as somebody who is quite resilient and bounces back pretty well what kinds of things did you do to look after your own mental health around that time yeah I think for me like you know I'm big on and it's something again uh, taught to by taught to me by my mom as well is like you know looking after your self-care looking after your like mental health um my mom is very uh open like with emotional talks and stuff like that Um, but yeah, I think one of the most important things, especially for men, and I can only obviously speak from a male perspective is like, because there's like stigma around like talking about emotions and like, you know, we, we want to be, we don't want to talk about this stuff. Like, um, I think that that's something that all men can really do is like support each other as mates, um, and like make it clear to each other that there's really open lines and available lines of communication with each other. Obviously professional help is like great as well, but you obviously need to have your close as a man. I feel like you need to have your close male friends that you can both talk about things from the same perspective and, you know, be close and open enough to really have these chats. Um, so that it takes away, you know, cause like anything, you know, we all have big issues in our life. I don't know, understand, uh, you know, what Mike was feeling at the time, but, you know, I know for me personally, when I've felt like sad or upset or bad or had tough times, like when you talk about it with people close to you and like, you know, it helps you work through it. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's important. So, um, but yeah, that, that broke my heart with, with Mike absolutely did. Yeah. And I think you're a hundred percent right. We need to talk about these things and the more we keep our feelings and our thoughts to ourselves, the bigger they get. So yeah. talking to people just makes it smaller and makes it more yeah. manageable. Mm. Like mm. dealing with things alone is like the worst, like, you know what I mean? Cause it's just you and your thoughts. Like, yeah. um, so I think, you know, as human, we're social creatures, we need other humans. Um, yeah. you know, so I think that's really important. Like having good, friends like a tight circle um, where you can literally talk about anything I think is really important 100% and so did you make any friends like that on Love Island or you know how did how did things go down in the end there for you 100% like I definitely made some good friends like I wouldn't say like anyone I met from Love Island is in my like close close circle um, but I definitely made some good mates with like people that I that I hung out with on the show it's just well everyone does their own thing like I feel after a show everyone goes different direction but I'll still uh you know contact like you know a couple of people here and there see how they're doing but yeah yeah, there's no like Love Island WhatsApp group where you're all kind of keeping up with each other. <laughs> nah, nah, but uh, what's uh, I've uh, I saw Mac the other night from my um, who was I was coupled with on Love Island. Um, mm-hmm. So because she lives in the Gold Coast and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I saw her the other night at like an event and that kind of thing. But yeah, there's no there's no WhatsApp group. I think there was too <laughs> too many uh, villa dramas for that. Mm. And you mentioned the villa dramas. You were involved in a bit of drama for a while. And part of that was because of, you know, how you came in and obviously the producers were saving you up to get you in there to create some excitement. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that in other interviews, you know, you've talked about that, that, you know, that was actually really exciting. You were happy going in when you did. But, you know, uh, for someone like 
me, I would feel so intimidated and nervous about going in after people had already started the adventure. So, I mean, how was that experience? So nerve wracking. And I think like watching it on TV, you think you have an idea, like, oh, because of the show, watching the episodes, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I know, you know, and then you get there and it's totally different. Um, Mm -hmm. Totally, totally different. And then you're like, oh, okay. Um, So it can be a bit daunting. It's a bit nerve wracking. It's a bit scary. But I think like, you know, people will go, oh, that would have been hard. But I'm like, well, you know, life is hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we face like little challenges here and there. And, you know, you just deal with it. And like, you know, at the end of the day, it's a show. It's not your whole life. You're there Mm -hmm. for a few weeks and then it's done. So you just... Yeah, <laughs> you do what you need to and get out. <laughs> <laughs> Just another scene in the movie of Teddy's life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. And yeah. so, I mean, there obviously was a lot of drama and I know you've talked about this a lot and, um, you know, there were some issues with you choose being interested in Erin and her being coupled up already. So what was that like for you actually living that experience of, of the people really actually having a problem with you for coming in and just playing the game? Um, I guess like I sort of looked at it prior to going on as like, oh, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like it's a, it's a love show. Like, you know, people are just going to understand that, you know, you just, it makes it interesting and it's fun and like, you just got to go for it. I see, I watched the UK version and like, that all go after each other's girls and stuff like that. So I think like, um, I was just sort of sticking to my guns. Like initially when I first watched the first episode, I was like, oh, Aaron. And then I just decided like to stick with it. The producers would be calling every day being like, who do you like? And I was like, just stuck to my guns. Yeah. Um, and then I just thought in there, I was like, oh, it's going to cause a bit of drama and then like, you know, we'll get on with it. But, um, but yeah, it, like it was turned into a way bigger deal than I thought. And um, mm. yeah, so it was tricky to navigate. And especially you've got all these people who have been in there for a couple of weeks together, 24 yeah. hours a day in their own little tribe community. And then you come in and then, uh, you know, like try and do something like that yeah people get mad so (laughs) well it's interesting because you know you've got other shows like bachelor in paradise where you know if you'd just walked in and done that there that that would have been okay that's what everybody does on that show so it's interesting that on love island it's it's such an issue yeah i feel like in the uk version as well like of love island Mm. they were like doing that stuff every episode and i was just like net (laughs) normal (laughs) And then, uh, but I, I feel like in that situation, you get like the power cup of like the house. Mm. And then especially like, um, you know, the, the other boys in the house, apart from like one or two, like were sort of like Eden's little crew. Mm. Um, so they would just do whatever dad said, like, you know what I mean? So, um, that I feel like that's what it was. I feel like Eden was mad. So then I felt, felt like the other guys who are a bit more like just, you know, sheep were just like, yeah, you're a naughty man. Like I'm not being <laughs> friends with you. And I'm like, you know, yeah. So childish Yeah, little boys. Yeah. And then Eden's gone on to have a, a baby now, hasn't he? With Cyrell from married at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting kind of turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I heard, I heard about that. I thought that was like um, <laughs> interesting. It's like when trying to get a Daily Mail article turns into fatherhood. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I guess, you know, everybody ends up where they're supposed supposed to end up and I guess Eden wasn't supposed to end up with Aaron no no and I think and like I've spoken to Aaron since then and and stuff like that and uh they they did not have a good breakup and like I don't know if you saw the video that Aaron made um crazy stuff crazy crazy stuff like about you know when she was trying to break up with him and like Mm -hmm. you know the I don't know. You should probably go watch it. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to get into trouble. But yeah, like cra- crazy stuff. I was just like, yikes. Wow. So she was like, you know, she was like, when I spoke to her about it, she was, yeah. 
Mm. She was on Teddy by then. <laughs> so I guess, you know, there is all of this stuff that comes along with being on a reality show, particularly in Australia. I feel like the reality stars kind of, um, well, I mean, look at, you know, Eden and Cyrell, and we always hear about different combinations of bachelor people and maths people. And, you know, there's a whole other kind of world of celebrity in the reality world. So what's your take on all of that in Australia? Um, I feel like uh, I've met a few people from other shows and stuff like that. And I actually have some friends like, you know, that I meet here and there that I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, they're kind of cool. But I feel like as well, it's, I don't know. It, it does seem a little bit weird to me. Like, you know, I, if I'm going to date a girl, I'm going to date a girl because I think, you know, she's amazing or whatever. I feel like there's a bit of dating of just like, oh, you're on a show. I'm on a show. Like, you know, we might get some publicity. Like, I, I reckon there's a bit of that mm. personally. Yep. And yeah. And you haven't been tempted to go down that path yourself? I think it's cringe. So like, yeah, if you, I guess like if you saw, like, if you saw me, like if I got like papped or something with like someone who was like famous or something, it would be cause I actually like them. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm not, not really going to like, yeah, go for just like, oh, I can get a little bit of attention if I do this or whatever. So I feel like there's a bit of that on there, but you know, I guess at the same time, you know, when you meet other reality stars, like you do have, uh, like some things in common because you've both gone through it, but yeah. Yeah, it's not really your scene. <laughs> it's not my scene, yeah, yeah. I'm way more low-key than people will realise. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's actually, that comes across in a lot of your interviews, you know, your values and the things that are important to you yeah. are much more grounded than you might assume of someone yeah. who's like on Love Island and on Instagram and has you know, a huge following like you do, you might think that your interests might be a little bit more superficial, but yeah. you know, the things that are important to you seem to be the things that are really important, like things like manifesting, like we touched on earlier yeah. and, you know, creating your dreams and making them come true in yeah. every sense, in terms of who you are and how you look and how you feel and what you're doing and where you're going yeah. and, um, you know, the importance of family and close, loyal, real friends and that kind of thing, not just, you know, the Instagram friends. Exactly. And that, that's what I'm big on, like, obviously, and I have met some lovely people that have been on, like, reality TV and stuff like that or, you know, famous and that kind of thing. But, you know, if, if, that, if they happen to become one of my, like, closest friends, like, cool. But, yeah, for me, I think, like, I've learned a lot of lessons, especially the last, like, few years of just, like, the humans that you surround yourself, like, most regularly have a huge impact on your life. Like, mm-hmm. absolutely huge. And at the moment, like, you know, I've got a small, uh, like, little click. Um, and uh, you, But the people in it, like... Uh, are so beneficial to me in terms of like just good energy being around them like no I never have to question like trust or anything I'm never worried Mm -hmm. about ulterior motives or anything like that so I think when you get friends like that you you have to sort of uh yeah you you have to keep them around and and that's why I'm very cautious about having letting new friends in because I'm like I don't know like you know it takes me a while to trust people yeah yeah and why do you think that is i think like i don't know i've had a few experiences where friendships where i've sort of like um obviously especially after love island as well it's so funny how um you know some people for example from adelaide that i like you know knew when i or met a few times they went one of two ways when I went on Love Island. They either were like, oh my God, bro, like, let's hang out, even though I haven't, they haven't sent me a message for five years. Yeah. Um, or, um, or they go the other way around, around and they start talking shit or posting shit. Or some do, but some have done both. Oh, <laughs> so wow. Like, hey, bro, let's hang out. Then you don't hang out and they're like, oh, fuck you, Teddy. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you just have to be when careful you get people with pure intentions. You got to keep them. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I guess 
you know, we all want to have genuine friendships. And as you said before, particularly, you know, if you want to have good friends so that you can talk about the things that are the deepest, darkest parts of yourself, yeah. you know, so that you don't have to pretend everything's okay. You want to make those real connections with people. So, I mean, it's part of that do you think just because of your experience with, you know, becoming famous and getting well known or were these kind of values important to you as a young person as well growing up? Yeah, I feel like it's all a learning curve. Like, you know mm. what I mean? I, I feel like we all have those experiences. I, almost anyone that you speak to, they've probably been fucked over by someone at some point, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a parent, whether it's a friend, whether it's a work colleague or anything. So I think it's just, you know, maybe young, when I was younger, I was like naive. And then, you know, you realize that not everyone's the same as you. Mm. Like, you know, if I have like a close friend or whatever, like, you know, I'm always going to have their best interests at heart. And then you get really close to people and then you realize that maybe they don't have the best mm. interest for you. Um, and then it kind of shocks you. So I think it's something I learned over time, but definitely being on Love Island and TV and Instagram followers and stuff accelerated. Yeah. The I mean, I think that's really interesting. I was talking to Mike Goldman about this recently, actually. And, you know, just as a person and for your own development as well, having the people around you that as you said, have your best interests at heart and want the yeah. best for you and want to see you succeed. And, you know, it's all about energy exchange, isn't it? It's about yeah, it finding is. the people that you feel nourished by and that you feel, you know, you, you create energy for each other instead of feeling drained. Exactly, exactly. And you can tell by how you feel when you're around people, you know, so, and that's why like, for example, I've got my, uh, my best friend staying in the same building as me at the moment. Um, he's gonna yeah. like, uh, move up here, I think. Um, but he's up here for two, three weeks, and we're in the same apartment building. And it's like, you know, we spend the whole day together, like yesterday, just, you know, broskies hanging out and stuff like that. The day before that, I spent the day with my assistant who um, she's like one of my other best friends and, and that kind of thing. And like, yeah, you know, you, you know that they, the love is real. You know that they just want to see you do well as much as you want to see them do well. So it's yeah. just that you don't have to be thinking about what you're saying. Like you can just fully be yourself, fully relax chill and you just don't worry about anything and that's that you need that in your life to like regenerate your energy I think 100 percent, 100 percent. and so just going back to Love Island one more time I just want to yeah, ask yeah, yeah. another question <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. um so what what would you say was the hardest part of being on a, a show that is so public you know and it is so you know, well received and watched by so many people. I mean, obviously we know that the, the perks that come out of it. Um, what was oh, yeah. the hardest thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, I think just sort of like the hardest thing for me was probably just like finding my way after that, because you look at it, if, okay, let's say you're like a, uh, a musician, right? You, you get progressively more known over time mm -hmm. um, with reality. It's just like, you know, especially a massive show like Lava and you go from nothing to everyone knows you like in, you know, you get on the plane to go to Spain. No one knows you, you get off the plane and there's paparazzi and everyone's, you know, like you're straight into club appearances and uh, you know, interviews and all that kind of stuff. So it's tricky waters to sort of navigate. And that's mm -hmm. why I see a lot of reality stars, you know, they might've been on a show like, four or five years ago and they're still like hanging on to mm. that sort of thing and I feel like initially for me the first like three to six months I was just like you know I was getting all this attention and I was like okay cool um, I feel like the toughest thing was me to go like for me was to go okay cool like that's great that we've got this but like where do we go to now like do you want to mm. be someone who just was like on a show once and then you went back to your normal job and then that was it. And, you know, you just can pick up girls easier because they know you like, mm -hmm. and that's your life. Or are you going, okay, this was great. Um, now it's time for like, what are we going to do next? What are we going to mm -hmm. do business wise? What else do you want to do in entertainment? Like what are other things? So I think it was just the toughest part was just that probably six month period of just being like after the initial burst, 
and being like, okay, what am I actually going to do? Like, I don't know. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's tricky waters to navigate. And most reality stars just don't navigate it. They just (laughs) fizzle out over time and that's it. Um, Versus I feel for me, like I have done that like very well, like, and you, you know, you guys will see over the next one to two years, like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to push and push harder, you know? Yeah. Amazing. And you know that again, that comes back to that mindset that you have and seeing the bigger picture and maybe you haven't worked out all the details, but you know, that's the whole thing with manifesting, isn't it? Like you see where you want to be. You don't have to know all the steps it's going to take to get you there. Exactly. Like I always say, like you get to choose what you don't get to choose how like Mm. choose what where you want to end up but like the universe will take you which whichever way it feels like it you just gotta (laughs) gotta (laughs) show up and do your best like yeah yeah absolutely and so you know following on from the show and that those six months of trying to figure out what was going to be next how did you land where you have landed now I think that also comes back to having like the right people around you. So Mm -hmm. again, like if you're surrounding yourself with people who just want to party, which I was initially, like I was just partying, like, you know, doing club appearances, surround yourself with people that just want to party. um, And, you know, maybe you're trying to get something out of you or, you know, like low vibration energy, you know what I mean? It's super Mm -hmm. fun doing all that stuff, but like, that's not, conducive to success and getting you know personal growth and stuff like that so I feel like when I uh, met my best friend like Eli and then you know I met a couple of other friends like um you, uh, you know Abby my assistant Andrew another one of my close friends and then uh, Harry Jousey I don't know if you watch Too Hot to Handle um mm-hmm. No, I didn't watch that show Netflix mm-hmm. reality show um and uh you know once I sort of got like a solid little you know click of people it's like if you hang around with five millionaires, you'll be the sixth one. Like Mm. if you hang out with five losers, you'll be the sixth one. So I think when I started to get the right people around me um, is that's when I started to like progress because my mindset changed from like, Oh, let's celebrate what I already have to like, Oh, okay. Like what's next. So even though I didn't know specifically what I wanted to do, at least my brain was thinking, we want to do something like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and that's the thing. People always worry like, Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I like, you know, how to do this or whatever. Just figure out what you like and what you want. And then just, you know, focus on getting somewhere and you'll work out the details later. Yeah. A hundred percent. And so what are you doing at the moment? So um, I'm doing a few different things. So uh, I do online business. So that's like my main sort of thing. So um, we have like our e-commerce stores um, and then we also have like an education uh, like academy um, Mm -hmm. because obviously everyone uh, these days, I mean, you want to learn how to make money online, um, especially with Corona Mm -hmm. and stuff like Mm -hmm. um, was really great for all of us and our students. So, um, so I'm doing that. Um, and then also I, you know, I want to do some more in the entertainment sort of space. So I'm working on a few things. Um, but with that kind of stuff, I like to tell you when stuff happens rather than say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So I'm working on a few things, um, because I really, really enjoy that kind of stuff. So, um, and then, yeah, that's my main two focuses at the moment. And Fantastic. Do you think you can share a little tip on e-commerce for anyone that might be listening and maybe they've got a website and they, you know, sell things online, whatever it might be, you know, what would be, is there one tip you might share with people about how they can think about expanding their business? I think if it's for someone getting started from scratch, I would say like just learn (laughs) like Mm -hmm. learn first find someone who can teach you or like you know start educating yourself in some sort of way and just take action everyone thinks you know when i speak to people like you know they say oh teddy it's amazing what you do i wish i could do that but i i don't know where to start um and i just think it doesn't matter where you start as long as you start you you don't have to be immediately good at everything like you know Mm -hmm. no one's born knowing how to be good at online business um i just think that you know just just start doing you know a little bit of self-education and then find someone who can show you because that's how i got started you know Mm -hmm. found someone who could teach me um and then learned how to do it so um yeah it's just about getting some training wheels on and finding your feet 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, that would be my advice. <laughs> nice. And that's it. I think that's really good advice because so often people get stuck because they're thinking, you know, I don't know enough about that. They just get stuck in their life in general. Like I'm not going to yeah. take that leap because I don't know how to be that or how to do that or, you know, what steps I would even take. So, you know, just educating yourself is the first yeah. step. And just doing, doing something, you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like with, say you wanted to get like, you know, fit, you wanted a six pack, like, you know what I mean? And people go, oh, I don't know what exercises to do. It's just like, well, just start like something like, you know, go for a walk, do some star jumps, like, you know, and yeah. that's why I think with business or anything that you want to uh, achieve, I used to do something, um, uh, which is because people, we make a lot of rationalizations of why we can't start. We have all these reasons. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. You don't have to do this. So what I used to do, and I learned this from like a self-help tape was write a list of everything that you can do with the resources that you have right now that doesn't require any extra money or extra time or extra, even if it's like little things. So for me, when I first wanted to get into like, you know, uh, modeling and, you know, TV and all that kind of stuff, it's like, I would write down like make star now profile, like, cause mm. it was free. I could do that today. And then I'd be like, send email to clothing brand, like to see if they need models, like little things like, so I just think write a list of what you can do. Don't focus on what you don't have the resources for. Just focus on what you can do with your resources right now and start and work your way from there. Amazing advice. I love it. You know, Thank I you. think, yeah, I think, cause I think it's so applicable to everyone, you know, yeah. it's not just about people in business. It's anyone who's thinking about doing anything. You just yeah. have to take that first step. Hundred percent. That's what it's all about. You know, action, taking action. Yeah, that's it. And so, you know, I know you've mentioned um, a self-help tape, and I know you've talked about Tony Robbins in the past. You know, has yeah. motivational speaking ever sort of crossed your mind? It definitely has crossed my mind um, because I don't know. I feel like when you first learn little like hacks to life of how you can be better or feel better or get places like the first thing you want to do is you want to tell everyone about it the first Mm. book i read anyone who would listen to me i would be like (laughs) whether they wanted to hear it or not i'd be like yep this is what you need to do um so yeah i think for me um i do it a lot with my e-com students anyway Mm. um but yeah i think maybe later in life i would definitely do something like that i think it'd be fun Mm, absolutely. So, the, you know, this timid little boy has turned into such a confident public speaker and someone that's just, you know, right out there. So it just goes to show, you know, we, we can be anything. We can be the opposite of what we think we might be. Yeah, you know? like you, people think of confidence as something you have as if like, you know, when you're created, it's just, oh, you, you're, get, you're given this much confidence and you're given mm-hmm. that much confidence. Um, I'm sure it is like that to a certain degree, like nature, but it's like a muscle, like you can work it. Like, yeah. you know, I used to have social anxiety. I hated being like in, you know, crowds. I hated being around people. I hated meeting new people. And then, so I just used to just do it more. And then all of a sudden you start to like it or you get better at it. Um, and same with anything. It's like confidence is a muscle, you know, I'm convinced. Yeah. A hundred percent, you know, but like so many of these lessons can take a lifetime to learn. And I guess some people aren't ready to to learn the lesson, but you know, I think you're already so far ahead of the curve in terms of your own personal development, like recognizing these things about yourself and pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone so many times has obviously paid off for you. So, you know, I think you should be really proud of yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I look forward to to hearing you speak on all of this, you know, down the track and using all of these great life references that you have and turning them into motivational tools for other people little lessons and stuff i feel like i got a lot in my this noggin of mine so yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's it well in the meantime it's a new life in the gold coast with some exciting projects coming up um and where can people find you on instagram uh yeah so at teddy briggs underscore unfortunately mm-hmm. at 
Teddy Briggs was taken. Jeez. But, <sighs> Who is that guy? Yeah, at Teddy Briggs, you'll see the blue tick. You'll be able to find me. Beautiful. And if people want to follow up on your e-commerce training and info, where can they go to find that? On my Instagram as well. So I do like a lot of like little education lessons on my story and then I save them as highlights. So um, anyone who just wants like a little beginner uh, e-com for dummies, just watch, watch some of my story highlights. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. I will put all of that info in the show notes so people can find it simply when they're listening to the episode. But Teddy, I just want to say thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you today and hearing a little bit about your life and your story and where you're going next. Amazing. Thank you so much, Yana. I had a lot of fun today. I appreciate you and uh, yeah, I can't wait to listen to this one. <laughs>